Oh, yeah, Pam, really good session yesterday. I think we'll classify yesterday's session as right elbow. If we look here at both chipping and the driving, the issue was we had that when we were chipping a golf ball and doing the long shots, the elbows were getting more and more kind of elevated, lifted or bent. But obviously, the more speed you put into that, the more the elbows would start bending. Now, the drills we discussed, obviously, in terms of practice, just swinging the golf club with your right hand only, the feeling of kind of like an underarm throw with your right hand would kind of give you the sensation of how the arm wants to work. And after a bit of practice, if you look at this move here now, you can see as the club goes back, nice little bit of wrist hinge there as we go back. And the right arm now kind of sort of pivoting up in the right shoulder there. And the hinge now coming in the wrist. The elbows aren't really bending at this point. And you can see a nice contact, that ball flying off the club face very, very high. So with a the sand iron there around the green, that would be an ideal kind of shot there. Just one thing to point out, if you were aiming towards this as your target line, ideally speaking, you'd want your lower half, hips and knees and feet to be a little bit more open or aiming to the left of target. It would just make it a little bit easier for your right arm to sort of create that underarm throwing technique. If your body aims too far off to the right, to hit the goal ball on that red line, you tend to sort of pull it around yourself and that in turn will kind of encourage that right elbow to bend as you were doing. So we can work on that kind of one arm swing, just right hand sort of swishing that club back and through. That will certainly help your chipping and your pitching around the green, A, getting more loft and a better contact. Now in terms of the driver, setup wise, very, very good. Top of the back swing, very, very good. As we said to you on the session, you create a lot of power there's a good shoulder turn there behind the golf ball yes you swayed a little bit to the your right side left as we look now um, but other than that's a very good top of the back position nice coil of the shoulders and a good hinge of the wrist what we're going to try and do now is maintain this angle for a little bit longer so we said about the beating the rug or the sort of hitting the impact bag we need to make sure we maintain that angle for longer as we start coming down here now there's a nice sort of shift of weight back to the left side which is great what you'll see here now is rather than the, the arm there barely moves and that club as we see if we sort of plot a mark there the club is here and with not really that much left arm movement your left arm is kind of there your left arm kind of moves down to about there yet the club has moved all the way from there to there so it's quite a bit of what we call unhinging of that wrist which in turn is where your power is going to be lost then your arm again doesn't move that far again to this position and the club's traveled again quite a bit of distance now it's going to have to travel further obviously it's got further to travel in any case but in an ideal world if we can just sort of maintain that right angle here just a little bit longer so as we're bringing the arm down here now we're keeping that wrist back so when you come into impact we'd be straightening up or getting the club and the arm to release up together at the ball rather than a bit early this was a better move in fairness as you came with the golf ball here now as you can see, the left elbow starting to pull away and bend a little bit. Strike-wise, though, very solid shot. Ball now selling down the driving range really, really nicely. Okay, and as we said, you can still make swings with these elbows doing as they are. And because you're becoming a better, more efficient golfer, you can basically get away with it more. The, the, uh, the, more, the higher quality of a, a skill you have, the more you get away with any errors in the swing. And so the swing sort of tendencies you have kind of will sort of stay there for... I guess ever in a day, you just get learned better at uh, adapting to it. But if we could just try and reduce it a little bit, get that swishing of that club, understanding kind of speed concepts. As we said, you create a lot of speed in the golf swing. Unfortunately, a lot of that speed is sort of done up here somewhere. It's not down at the golf ball we need it. So try and work on that kind of upside down club, that swishing of the club. Or if you can get hold of alignment sticks, any sort of light stick for we can make some swings with swing with your one arm and just try and see how much sound we can make because the more sound you're making the greater the speed you're swinging that object so work on that angle with the wrist here we don't want to be sort of unhinging the wrist too much before we come into the golf ball if we do that all the power now is lost and then we're kind of just pulling the arms so as fast as we can to try and get speed if we can use the hinging or the unhinging of the wrists for the power that ball would fly a lot further. But overall, again, finish position, really nice, very balanced up on your left side. There is a lot of good in that swing. It's just a little bit of the power being wasted and not utilised the golf ball, just being used a bit too much up here as opposed to down there where the ball would be. So hope that all makes sense. Obviously, any questions, you can give me a shout, and I will catch up with you soon. Cheers, Pam.